Hello, I'm Chuck, and welcome to the Delaware Valley Original Music Showcase. Tonight, we continue our mission of helping support original music in the Delaware Valley with our three-step process. Listen, experience, and pass on original music. But we need your help to get the word out. So let's get started. Tonight's artist calls Claymont Delaware home, but his adventures have taken him all across the Delaware Valley. Here is Ronan Ali on the Delaware Valley Original Music Showcase. So now you got a taste of his music. We'll find out more about him in an interview when we come back. That whole area uh, is rich in, in music, uh, rich in music, uh, music loving and uh, musicians. Uh, we can start from Whitney Houston, her family coming from there, uh, Wayne Shorter, uh, the jazz composer and saxophonist, uh, George Clinton and his old army. You know, they began there in New Jersey. Uh, not to mention, you know, uh, not that I was there long enough to be influenced by them, but the whole area 
around my age group, a little older, the old slavery unit, like Queen Latifah, uh, Cho Rob G, Naughty by Nature, you know, that type of bed uh, spawned it. Plus, you know, this heavy record collection my father had, what I heard on the radio, the fire primarily, you know, shots to kind of Rufus, you know, Sting, Police, you know, and the MTV came about. So, you know, that started the love of music. But as far as uh, my background, I started playing out to a saxophone in fourth grade when I was about nine. Um, I've always been a singer, vocalist, and because of that, I went to the North Boys Chorus School in North Jersey uh, between 86 and 88. And that's sixth grade through eighth grade. After that, I moved to Eastern Pennsylvania. They immediately put me in a play and uh, the high school band was saxophone. And I did percussion lab and orchestra in high school. Again. Everything after that, music wise, is pretty much self taught. And uh, that's why I started getting into the industry itself. Uh, and, you know, a lot of stuff happened. Between the next, a lot of things filling in after that. I'm so glad you spent the night. Baby, you're a lovely sight. Yes, you are. Two beats on in my heart. You're the best by far. It's hard to say. I love them both. You know, I can, particularly on drums, I sing and play at the same time. You know, and I think that may have come through uh, watching cats like Earth, Wind, and Fire or Prince's band, you know, with Sheila E. You know, you see Maurice Wright and Philip Bailey singing and playing. I always thought that was admirable to be able to have the coordination, be able to play and sing at the same time and uh, be proficient in it. So, you know, I like being out front sometimes, but uh, there have been cases where I, I had a, you know, I was with a drummer that didn't go where I needed to go. So sometimes I wish I was back there. And then I just like seeing people move. So a lot of times I like being on the drums. If I was a DJ, I'd do, I'd do that too. I like seeing people move and dance. So it's really hard to say. I like, I like both. I call it soul because, you know, whatever idiom I use, whether it's uh, rhythm and blues or, or jazz or hip hop, you know, you have to have that soul into it to, to connect to people. You know, I, I like so many different genres of music. It really matters what you do with it and what you put into it. So I just categorize it as soul. I know a, a record store or, or a, whether it's online or physical records, they'll probably categorize it as an R&B section because I'm singing most of the time. But I, I, I categorize it as soul. You gotta make the person feel what you're doing. And that comes from being sincere. Some reason you bring to life. It all comes from inspiration. I mean, most of the time I'll use my drum kit as a desk. <laughs> you know, I'll make a beat or something if I'm if I'm behind it. You know, I'll make a beat and then a lot of things flow from there. I, I tend to hear everything. And um, then there are times when I'm walking, because I'm you know, mobile a lot, there's times when I'm walking and um, I'll hear a melody come in my head or a drum beat and I'll build it off from there. And I learned to keep the tape recording because there are times where it will just come and then just fade off. So if I don't get it right then, then it's a problem. If I'm by a piano, then I'll do that. So 
sometimes somebody saying something to spark a song and then everything comes from there. I mean, really, I hear everything in my head, all the parts and everything from that point. So one thing can spark a whole composition. The challenge is getting to record it, which is very challenging nowadays because of me having four children, you know, being a father, a husband, and other things coming about. That's the main challenge. Surprisingly enough, making the music is the easy part. Well, I guess, um, do you ever see yourself giving it up? I mean, you got your kids, you got your wife, you got, you know, life outside of music. Do you ever see yourself walking away? Giving it up? No. I'd die if I gave it up. Literally, because that's just so much a part of me. Even if I said I'm going to not record or do anything anymore, it's going to come up in some way. You know, I may be a teacher. You know, I may just start beating on the table or something. That, that would really be like extracting a bigger part of me. So that's not going to happen. And besides, you know, a lot of people run into the whole thing of, and I, I've seen many artists over time go, I got to give it up, you know, because I got to get a real job. You know, I got to feed my kids. You know, like, you know how many people feed their kids with music or their art? You know, you see it all the time. You go to, you go to concerts and pay $60 a ticket. Other people pay 200 for their seat for that person, and they're feeding their children with music. So it's just a way to go about it. That's all. Oh man, again, it all goes hand in hand, so it's hard for me to really say what I like the best. You know, I love the writing process. I guess I'd probably say recording and getting it all together, making it come to fruition, making everybody see what it is you want to do. And to be, to be honest, if I could be an engineer, I wish I'd gone to school for engineering, you know, recording engineering, because that's so, I love that. If they don't call it an art film, but it is to me. I love that. I mean, people don't understand how serious being a recording engineer or even a sound engineer is. I mean, you can have the greatest musicians on stage and if they can work together, great. But if the sound isn't coming out, you don't hear anything and you wouldn't know it. And the sad thing is most people who come to hear music, they don't really get into the specifics about who's doing what. Or, or, or who's responsible you know if the sound is bad they just know the bad is the band sounds bad but the sound engineer is the one that can make everything sound crisp I, I've seen a band of main condition one time at the Keswick Theater in, inside uh, Pennsylvania north of Philadelphia and main condition came out and we know you know those who know them know they're one of the greatest bands ever assembled but they wouldn't know it that night because the sound man just, I, they probably didn't have a sound check of what, the sound man just screwed everything up. You would think they were an opening act. You know, it, it was horrible. The, the lead singer plays drums too, but he got on the uh, drums and they were nowhere near mic'd up as opposed to the other drummer. Like I saw what he was trying to do and you know, the sound kept squeaking on him. You know, I saw keyboard solos louder than the rest of the record, man. They were professional about it, I'll tell you that, while they were on stage. And they were lucky that the crowd was making condition fans because they knew how the music was supposed to sound. But 
you know, having that responsibility and making albums and recordings sound great, I, I always thought that was amazing. But I didn't love performing so much as being a sound engineer. But that's like, I guess how some people would get off making a, you know, a 300 piece puzzle or a 3D puzzle or something like that. Oh yeah, I was writing some stuff earlier today. You know, the problem is where it's gonna fall in. You know, because I think I think of albums, whether they're EPs or LPs or whatever the case, I think of them as compositions, like stories. You know, I'm a conceptual writer. You know, every now and then I'll you know I'll come up with something on the spot or it'll be silly and this that and the other. But I always think this can work in this. Uh, this composition here, this can fit in this story, you know. You know, I um, again that comes from listening to certain artists uh, that I grew up with, like like Earth Wind and Fire, for example. Their whole album were concepts. Everything had to be from their shows and everything. We're talking about how great uh, their shows were, and they were legendary. But it fit the concept of the album. Master Ace, the MC. Um, it's another one. If you listen to his albums, everything is a story. It's a movie. You know, the interludes fit right into the song. Uh, Red Man is another one. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, The Pimple Butterfly, is another one. The Harris One is another one. Everything is conceptual. Everything fits into a story as opposed to just singles on a song. You know, I like everything to be cohesive. So, yeah, I've written. I've written uh, quite a few songs in the past few days, but you know, I just can't wait to record them. The backstory of the song is basically it's a love song. It's a concept that um, that I've experienced and others have experienced. It's like you um, you have a beautiful woman or, or something at a good date, spend the night, you wake up, be a wife, you know, or you know, you long time girlfriend, you wake up and you see her with, with the sun shining on her and you know, you just think life, you know, you look at her, I looked at her as the earth, the sun shining on her, and you know, you see beauty blossom from her, 
as I said on the record. And it also speaks on respiration too. You know, the uh, old saying, she takes my breath away, and that will be your carbon dioxide. And uh, when she speaks to you, you know, sweet words, you know, that's your oxygen. So it's, it's, it's all speaking of uh, the cycle of respiration at photosynthesis. So I speak of a woman as the earth. Life experiences, yes. Um, meaning they could be stories, and then a lot of times it's, it's conversation. You know, some conversation I may have had with somebody, or but a lot of times it's my thoughts. They're my thoughts, you know, something I may think of. And, you know, a lot of times it's common. They're, they're all common experiences. But as an artist, I'm not a fan of monotony. And I'm not a fan of copying, but, you know, what we call hip hop biting. So if it's going to be the same thing, look at it from a different angle. That's the way I see it. You know, so, like, I have a song called Who Is That? I don't know how many people have done that song or that topic, but it's basically talking about the song that you love so much you just can't figure out who it is. And um, if I can, I'll try to work out something with Shazam on that one. <laughs> part up with them because I wrote the song back in 97 and it was basically the concept where I was in South Carolina and they had some really good stations but there was one station that would play music all the time and unless you knew what the song was already for some reason the disc jockeys never told you who it was and I'm like who is this and I hear this song all the time it's great so that that's what that one was about time is Ronan Ali on the Delaware Valley Original Music Showcase. Thank you. 